Hello fellow Pokemon trainers, my name is Video James, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to use Wobbuffet. Now before I start this video, I just want to say that if you are actually going to be attending the North America um, International Championships, which is at Columbus, Ohio this year, um, from July 6th to July 8th, they're going to be having a mystery gift where they're going to be giving out a version of last year's champions, Crocodile, of the 2017 World Championship, which is a crooked eye with the adamant nature and it has the intimidate ability and it comes with the moves earthquake crunch taunt and protect regardless today we're going to be looking at how to use wobbuffet now like i said in my how to use octillery video this was actually requested by a good friend of mine so we're actually going to be taking a look at this so you see wobbuffet pure psychic typing meaning we are going to be getting that weakness to bug dark and ghost which is kind of a problem if we see something like a greninja or a beedrill that beedrill typically tends to have knockoff and at least fell stinger so you don't really want to send Wobbuffet against one of them or if there's out like a Greninja you don't really want to deal with one of them either. Only Wobbuffet's abilities we see it actually has a really good ability Shadow Tag. That Shadow Tag means that you can't really switch out the Pokemon normally that when Wobbuffet's on the field the opponent's Pokemon usually can't switch out but they can still switch out by using stuff like Baton Pass, U-Turn or Volt Switch. And then Wobbuffet's hidden ability is actually Telepathy which prevents damage from other teammates during a double battle. Now, I gotta say, it's kind of a useless ability unless you're running stuff like Earthquake, but it does have its uses in tricking your opponent, that you could run Telepathy and trick your opponent into thinking you're not running a competitive Wobbuffet. Looking at Wobbuffet's stats, we see it's got one stat in particular that stands out above the rest, and that is its HP. So we see Wobbuffet's got 33 in the attack, special attack, and speed, 58 in both ends, and 190 in the HP. I think that's actually one of the biggest HPs to exist. So when we look at Wobbuffet, there's really only one way to run it, and that's just kind of a tank Wobbuffet. So we've got the leftovers with Shadow Tag, we've got Encore, Destiny Bond, Counter, and Mirror Coat, with the maxed out defense and special defense, with whatever defensive nature you're wishing to boost, and the four IVs thrown into the HP, or EVs, not IVs. So with this set, we're basically running as kind of a blocky Wobbuffet. So we've got Encore on there just to shut Pokemon up like Shuckle, that if Shuckle's using a move like Sticky Web, we can Encore that Shuckle and then swap out into something that can take advantage of a locked up Pokemon like, say, Dialga. That Dialga can take extreme advantage of a locked up Pokemon, go for a stat raising move, and then just wreck house. And then we've got Destiny Bond. Destiny Bond is your basic, if I'm going down, you're coming with me, that if Wobbuffet uses Destiny Bond, it's going to end up taking whatever kills it down with it. And with Wobbuffet's high HP, it's going to be at least a two-hit KO. And then we have Counter. Now, Counter is actually very good because it is basically a response move that if Wobbuffet is hit, it'll be back double the damage in a form of a physical attack, I believe. And it's actually a very good move to run on Wobbuffet because... Your opponent hits you with a powered up move and it doesn't exactly kill you, but it still does a lot of HP. Then you use counter, you're going to be dealing back more damage and you're going to be taking out their Pokemon. And then you have Mirror Coat bounce back certain moves. That Mirror Coat works out very well on certain moves. You could run it with something else. I don't really think Mirror Coat is an absolute necessity, but it is still a very good move. Now an option you could run with Wobbuffet is you could actually run it with Zoroark. Now the reason I say you can run it with Zoroark is because Zoroark actually possesses a great deal of trickery to it. So as you all know, Zoroark's ability is actually Illusion, which means it takes the form of the Pokemon that is last in the party. So say you had a Zoroark, a Salamence, and a Wobbuffet on your party. Well, you put the Zoroark up front, you put the Wobbuffet in back, and you put the Salamence in the middle, and then you send out the Zoroark first turn, and say your opponent sends out a Scizor, well, now they're going to be raising their attack up to max to be able to try and take out Wobbuffet. And during all that time, you're just going to be sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting. And using moves that don't really make a lot of sense. That you could go with using just a bunch of counters. And you just wear down counter while you're waiting for them to try and hit you. And once they finally decide to hit you, the Focus Sass is actually going to save you from being one hit KO'd. And then counter is going to deal back more damage than they did. And it's going to end up killing them. And then after that, it is revealed that, surprise, surprise, the Zoroark actually is a Zoroark and not a Wobbuffet. So they basically just wasted a bunch of stat turns trying to raise up their Pokemon 
or to get taken out by a Wolfie. And what's great about Zoroark is after the Focus Sash and the counter combo goes away, it's not completely useless yet. That it's still got moves like Taunt. That Taunt can shut down um, setupers like Shuckle, again. And it's got Night Days. That Night Days, good dark move, and it has a chance to lower the accuracy. Toxic. Toxic. Very good status move. We all know how good Toxic is. And we just use that to set up for stuff like Greninja. That we could send in a Greninja after the Zoroark, and it'll just wreck house. Or we send in our Salamence, and then the Salamence just wrecks house. Either way, Zoroark mixed with Wobbuffet. Very good combo. And that is actually going to be it for how to use Wobbuffet. Now, the reason it only really has one set is because its move pool isn't really that extensive. Wobbuffet doesn't really have that wide of a range of moves, so you can't really do much with it. But it is still a very good Pokemon, especially because of its tankiness, that it does still work out very well. I have seen some matches won with just a Wobbuffet because of Destiny Bond and Counter, that they used Counter and took out basically every Pokemon, and the leftovers just kept healing them up. And since they couldn't switch, they couldn't do anything, so they just kept getting hit with counters and taken out. And then once it was down to two Pokemon, and they still had one Pokemon after the Wobbuffet, then they just used Destiny Bond to prepare themselves for death, and they took out the opponent's last Pokemon with them. Regardless, for now I'm going to leave this video here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, if you have any Pokemon you want to see me do videos on, let me know down in the comments, and I will see all you beautiful people in the next video.